they hate. And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian, and today is Monday, October 2nd, 2023, and this is episode 535 of the Lots Project podcast, where we're defying norms and designing freedom. Today's episode is titled Coffee Lingo Explained, the language of your morning cup, and is brought to you by Food Forest Farms. Today, I'll be chatting about coffee-related terms and their meanings, but first, let's grab that cup of coffee, catch up with what's going on, and chat a little bit. We'll dive into that topic in just a little while. Good morning, good morning. A couple people in already. Good morning, Mike, Philippine Nomad, hanging out. As always, MSU Rifle, how we doing this morning? How was everybody's weekend? Morning, Canadian Farmstead, driving. Uh, be safe. I hope uh, hope you don't uh, hope you don't swerve uh, with all the the knowledge you'll be ingesting today of copy terminology. Hunter, how we doing over on Twitch? Thanks for stopping in, and good morning, Pip. How we doing? And happy Monday to you as well. What do we have in the cup today? <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Rough morning this morning. Uh, in the cup today, Silver Bullet. Been drink, drinking Silver Bullet all weekend. Over the weekend, it's been fantastic. Been out at uh, out at Tim's heading out there in the mornings, uh, the end of last week. And then Saturday, Corey and I ended up going out there, but, uh, having a couple extra French presses in the morning had two, man, four days solid. I'm, I'm ahead on my coffee. And so been a little tired with all the physical exertion that I'm not used to working out on uh, property day after day in a row. And, uh, yeah, I've been hitting an extra, extra French press and so a little highly more highly caffeinated than usual the last few days and um yeah I think I'm gonna scale back to that one again <laughs> yeah I think I'm going back to the one French press a day and two on uh, special occasions but silver bullet in the cup this morning and that was easy to uh, drink two a day for sure for sure it's definitely a, a premium premium uh, bag of coffee so Thanks, Brian, over at Food Forest for coming up with that uh, with that silver bullet blend and sending plenty out with uh, my order. Uh, so what did we get done? What did we get done Friday? I guess I talked to you guys last Friday morning uh, and then had Friday, Saturday, Sunday to, to kind of dive into things. Uh, Tim's been in town. Tim is in town till Wednesday, I believe. And then he's got to go out to Kansas to go to another uh, speaking engagement. And then he'll be back here for SRF. So we were trying to pound out as much as we could out at the property with two of us on site. And so we got to it. Uh, a recap Wednesday, I headed out. I believe Tim wasn't feeling well Thursday. We got out there. We cleared some trail and um, got some got some lumber unloaded. Friday, we started to it. We started building outhouse out on the property, get that outhouse in, and then uh, then we can start listing some campsites. So we got that lumber on, done on uh, unloaded on Thursday. Friday, we got out there. We started building. We got uh, a plan for where we wanted it. Got the site cleared out. Got uh, got got it sticked up. We got the frame frame built up, and uh, and yeah, kind of left it at that. It was a long day. It was warm. We got to, to the afternoon and said, oh, this is good. This is good. We had her framed up. Um, man, Saturday, we were going to go out. Corey wanted to get out and uh, and see Tim, get out and work on the property a little bit and be outside. And um, But we needed to, to be a short day with the dogs and that being, you know, she's super busy at work right now. So weekends are very important time down. And so we took... Um, Took four or five hours on Saturday and and kind of dedicated to that and and had that all pre set up and we were lucky enough. Uh, Sean Mills and his wife came out. Sean from Hack My Homestead came out and helped on Saturday afternoon and we were able to pretty much finish up the the outhouse, which was cool. Sean is uh, was way more experienced builder than either one of us and clued us into clued us into a, a few things that uh, made things easier for sure. And we'll definitely make things easier going forward. Um, 
with any plans to build more of these these same structures and and that's kind of the the mo right now is we're we got this one done uh kind of walked through it and visualized the whole thing got a cut list and and that and then we're going to plop together a eight by eight cabin uh up in one spot just an eight by eight little bunkhouse uh tim tim has plans for that and uh <laughs> cut list and everything like that so we have that, and once we get one of those done, um, it's going to be like rinse and repeat, and not necessarily on this property. Well, definitely on this property, but not only on this property. We'll probably um, probably have that option going forward on any hip camp property that I start looking into. So, outhouse is easy. It'll be it'll be a standard cut list. It'll be standard price and uh, assembly instructions, and then the the eight by eight bunkhouse that he went with is really interesting because the way that the roof slants, the way that it kind of lays out, um, we're hoping it's going to be very modular. Like um, we're going to be able to put one up and then if he wants, we will be able to expand it in any of three directions. So there's a porch on the front, but the way the roof slants from back to front you would be able to back another one up to the backside and join the roofs together and cut a door through and make another room, another eight by eight room. And then also to each side, you would be able to extend out. So you'd be able to make like almost a long um, 16 by whatever length you wanted a uh, house with room by room by room. So if only if you're only able to hump lum pump lumber by hand up to a building site, you'd be able to one at a time build yourself an eight by eight, have shelter on site, and then continue to build on eight by eight, eight by eight structures with only short lumber and optimized carrying. So um let me see, got a comment here. Uh, MSU rifle says I had I hang out. Hang out with Sean last Saturday at Back to the Land. Yeah, good guy. Yeah, Sean was great guy. Sean, uh, Sean and Tim and I uh, did uh, quite a bit of work there. Corey and Don spent some time hanging out, and um, they had a good time. And so it was all it was all good. Uh, Sean's going to be out at Workday, I believe. I think they're both coming out again on Workday, um, the twelfth. I think is that the date. Thursday before SRF. Let's yeah, the <laughs> twelfth. Uh, work day coming up on the twelfth, so that's exciting. We started getting uh, plans together for that. We kind of know where we're at now with what Tim and I are going to get done. Uh, one more day out there with the both of us. Then he has some catch up to do tomorrow with laundry and show prep and all that stuff, and so do I. And then he takes off on Wednesday. I'm going to try to get out there a few more times between now and the time people start showing up next week um yeah i think we have a good handle on what we're going to do we're doing a lot of trail clearing a lot of really like maybe trail widening and and um really um knocking down the trails uh right now they're kind of rough cut in um stems and and uh, weeds and stuff probably like ankle high or more and kind of growing in as uh, as it as, as it will but maybe knock that down. We haven't had a weed eater out there. Uh, we did for a, a minute. Sean Sean had one. Uh, we used it for a little bit, and it uh, works well to really shave that down and make those trails uh, a little nicer to each of the campsites and, <coughs> and the eventual bunk sites. And then we also will probably be constructing a, a small bridge uh, to get over a little ravine with a creek in it. And then um, also trying to get that eight by eight cabin together or depending on how much lumber we get up to that main site, maybe just uh, uh, move all of that lumber. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, the type of people that show up to this event, I think we get a lot more done than we ever hope. So that is uh, that is the plan for now. Um, lots of clearing to do. Lots of clearing uh, when you're working with 15 acres of uh, just raw growing land, living land that um, like Tim was very shocked when he showed up how much it had filled in since he was here in the spring. And every time I go out, I'm, I'm amazed at, at the growth and the change on the property. So 
it's a lot of uh, it's a lot to maintain. And I think the more we cut it back, the more we really, um, really cut it back to the to the lowest we can, the more that stays groomed, I guess groomed would be the word the trails, because uh, Corey and I cut them down a, a few areas this spring. Um, and they stay fairly well. I don't think they'll take a ton of maintenance over the year once they're knocked down. Like the ones we really took the time to get down to get down to the ground, almost close enough to the ground where it, it stayed green, but it didn't come back. I think over the summer it grew maybe to, to knee, knee height. So once or twice through with a, uh, with a weed eater, a battery operated weed eater or um, a sickle or something, uh, machete it will it'll stay pretty pretty shaved down and then we get some people out there using the property walking on the trails it will um, it will really beat them down even more so excited about that it's uh, it's coming together we're really being conservative and starting in the one corner of the property and slowly moving our way to the rest um, it's going to be wild open property on the back side uh, for quite a while so that'll be interesting and we're hoping to throw, um, hoping to throw trails up through the the un, undeveloped area of it, so people have places to to hike around and things like that. Good morning, K Bonk. How are you doing? Thanks for swinging in. Uh, let me see what else I got on my uh, coffee chat list here this morning. Um, yesterday, oh, yesterday, uh, we had a good day yesterday. Uh, Corey and I were getting caught back up on show prep and things like that. And Corey getting some time off, um, getting some exercise with the dogs. And Tim and I and Corey decided we were going to go get some food uh, somewhere, get some dinner, hang out. She hadn't really got to to sit down and talk to him other than when we were working out at the property. And uh, so we came up with a place around here that we enjoy eating. Uh, I know Tim likes to eat. I like to eat. And so we picked a, a place that you can get a huge burger, a really good burger, uh, Earl's Grill in Crump, Tennessee. If you're ever in the area, definitely uh, swing in, check them out. It's uh, styled after an old school uh, garage, like mechanic garage. And that's like the theme of everything in the restaurant, uh, all the plates and cups and things like that. So, uh, so. <laughs> We um we we headed on over there and man we sat for uh we we joined we got there a little early and then uh Tim showed and all of a sudden we were looking at the clock and man when we sit and talk uh, time flies because we were just blown away how how quickly it went and then we uh, took off but man great burger I had a I had a huge burger Tim had a huge burger uh Corey ended up getting the they have a thing called the Turbo Tater. Yeah, Turbo Tater. It uh, is fantastic. It's the second time she got it, she thought maybe it was a fluke the first time, but it's an enormous uh, baked potato, and then they load the top. It's loaded baked potato, and then you can add on, um, I think it's pulled pork, pulled pork or fried chicken. And when you get fried chicken with it, it like, like comes with a side of fried chicken. But uh, pulled pork comes on top, and she said it wasn't a fluke. She said it was uh, definitely just as good as it was the time before and i was satisfied with the food tim looked at me and said we'll have to come back here maybe with becky so i think he was satisfied with the food it was a win 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 um i am trying to uh figure out how to get him to go to uh, hillbillies though he said he enjoys chicken wings and uh yeah, Hillbilly's Hillbilly's Wing Shack here, even closer to me, a little farther from where he stays. But uh, yeah, experience. And we'll have to immerse him in the the West Tennessee culture. Get him to go to Hillbilly's, and uh, we'll see what Becky thinks of Hillbilly's too. Little little rougher, little rougher than Earl's. Little rougher for Earl's. Uh, K Bong says uh, like a garbage potato. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, no, it's just a loaded baked potato, and then they put a protein with it. It's um, pretty pretty straightforward. But uh, she said he just cooks that it's cooked perfectly and and uh, does a really good job with it. So I don't know. You say garbage potato, and all I can think of is garbage plate. You ever um, you ever been to Nick Tahoe's in Rochester, K Bonk, and uh, experienced the garbage plate? Definitely good. Definitely good. Uh, 
after a few cocktails, it's even better. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're up 15 minutes here. That's uh, that's kind of coffee chat for today. We'll move on to the topic of the day today. Um, but first, let's hit that uh, hit that sponsor post. Um, Food Forest Farms Coffee Day is sponsored by Food Forest Farms. I'm excited to have Brian as a sponsor of the show and uh, also the weekend emails. But uh, Food Forest Farms, if you don't know about it, the extraordinary is the norm. They fuel their mission with uh, diverse offerings from hand roasted specialty coffees that'll bring joy to your mornings to just stunning jewelry and metal art pieces that add flair to your style. But that's not all. They also provide unique camping experiences through Hip Camp and Airbnb stays perfect for adventure seekers in the Pacific Northwest. So whether you're a coffee enthusiast, a fan of unique crafts, or an adventurer at heart, Food Forest Farms has something special for you. If you're ready to embark on this extraordinary journey, head over to foodforestfarms.com to explore more. Don't forget to sign up for their newsletter to stay in the loop about their latest offerings and initiatives. Enjoy the adventure and be sure to check out Lots 10 one-time use 10% off coupon for listeners of the show. If you go look at print anywhere, it's Lots 5 for 5% off. But for somebody that has me in their ears, I give you the Lots 10 one-time use, um, that one-time use uh, discount code. So check that out, Lots 10 over at foodforestfarms.com. Thank you, Brian and uh, Chicken Joe for sponsoring the show. I appreciate it greatly. Um, anyway, today, what I wanted to do, I've been talking about coffee, coffee rolled up, uh, Monday morning, uh, Monday morning topic on the random, uh, number generator. So I was going around in my head and around and around what I wanted to, um, what I wanted to, um, talk about, about coffee. So we've been bouncing around and talked about kind of what coffee beans are, uh, where they come from, uh, how to brew it, going down those roads, and <coughs> wasn't sure what I wanted to talk about. <coughs> and um, I was talking to someone, and they asked me a question about a word that I had used in one of the coffee episodes. And I was like, huh, that might not be a bad idea. Let's do uh, a vocabulary time. Uh, <laughs> Good morning, Backwoods Butcher. How are you doing? He says lots 10. Let's be honest. It's lots five and a half. Five and a half is generous, man. Five and a half is generous. And uh, K-Mong says most diners in New York State have the same sort of garbage plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure they do. Nick Tahoe's, though, was uh, was mine. So that was that was where I liked my garbage plate. Anyway, I thought I would uh, I would thought I would go through um, old school vocabulary list, and I populated up some. Uh, I did some searches. I populated up some uh, some vocabulary lists. So I just kind of kind of run through them and uh, and chat about their meanings, what they are. If you uh, if you have any coffee terms that you uh, would like me to see if I know what they mean, and I can talk about them, drop them in the comments in all caps, but. Uh, I got a list, um, a ton of them. I don't think I'll ever get to all of them, but uh, we could roll through them and see where where the conversation goes with that. But uh, lots of them will be pretty straightforward and easy, and others might be a little more in-depth of, uh, of a chat. So let's get to these lists. Let's get to the coffee list. Man, Arabica. Arabica is on the list. They uh, When I populated the two lists I did, they, they both went in alphabetical order, so... We'll go uh, do our ABCs of coffees today. So Arabica, this is one of the most popular types of coffee beans. It's known for its smooth, mild flavor. Arabica is like the cool kid that everyone wants to hang out with. It is the um, it is the, the the premium side. Excuse me. You have Arabica and Robusta. Arabica is uh, is the one you want. Uh, let's move on. We've talked about Arabica beans. I did a whole episode on beans, and that was one of the the, the two major types, and then that third and uh, fourth minor types coming in. Uh, barista would be B. B is for barista. Barista is the the guy that uh, when you go into Starbucks or you go into your local coffee shop, the guy behind the espresso machine, the guy making the coffee drinks. I shouldn't say guy, guy or girl, uh, whatever they uh, want to choose to be that day or whatever 
genitalia they have. But uh, the barista is the one making that coffee. That is their name, is uh, as a barista. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Again, like I said, uh, number three, we'll come up to crema. Crema, not cream, um, not creme fraiche. Uh, and we watched uh, Super Troopers, stu- Super Troopers 2 this weekend and uh, the creme fraiche from Canada. Nope, crema, C-R-E-M-A. It's not cream. It's crema is the layer. If you've ever pulled an espresso shop uh, in a home machine, watched one pulled in a coffee shop, when they pull it into the cup, and if you get order a straight espresso, uh, there is a light brown layer on the top of the liquid. So you've got your dark coffee covered colored espresso and then a light brown layer on top. It's the last part of the last part of this, the pressurized water that's pushing through the espresso that kind of bubbles out. Um, what I would like to think of it is as like the, the foam on the top of your soda. The little bit of last, um, that little bit of last stuff that comes out of the espresso machine, and it's a sign that the the shot was pulled correctly. It was the sign. It's the sign that um, it's the sign that um, the espresso was tamped properly. The the proper um, compaction in the in the machine. It's the the machine is calibrated right. The water was the right temperature and it was extracted properly is when there's that crema on top. Coffee head. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Hunter says coffee head, just like on a beer. Uh, Not quite that thick. You don't want it thick and billowing like the head on a beer. But yes, on the top of uh, on the top of an espresso shot. So it's uh, it's good stuff. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's basically basically a barista can. watch the performance of the shot coming out of the of the machine when he's drawing them <coughs> and get a gauge on does the machine need to be clean does it need to be blown out am i does my grinder need to be readjusted am i not tamping it hard enough you can tell a lot by the crema that comes out at the end of your espresso shot so um that is a is a great tool for that um let's see uh Dopio? I mean, I don't know some of these terms. I'm guessing this is an Italian term. Uh, Dopio, it says, is uh, just a fancy way of saying a double shot of espresso. Because, man, why not have more? Why not just have more? So, I, uh, yeah, I have uh, new terms coming up on this list, too. Um, Yeah, Loco says, like, the head on your draft beer, for sure. For sure. Thanks, Hunter and Loco, for dropping in on that. Espresso. It's not X. Espresso. When you uh, when you talk about the little cup, the little hot concentrated shot, it's espresso. It's spelled E S P R E S S O. Um, man, don't ax your mother. Just just keep the X out of espresso. Um, but concentrated form of coffee, sure, served in shots. It's uh, man, it is the the rocket fuel of coffee for sure. It is the base of a lot of other drinks. Um, lots of cultures will, (laughs) lots of, uh, lots of places will drink espresso straight, but the majority of the time here in the States, you're going to get an espresso. You're going to get it, uh, as the base coffee layer in say a latte or mocha or Americano, you can make, uh, something that's very similar to, um, similar to, uh, drip brew coffee with espresso and water so basically it takes that concentrated shot and um, makes it full size so good morning rewilder life rachel how are you doing this morning uh she says she's late to the party puppy kept her up yeah i saw pictures of your puppy this weekend and uh man have fun with that have fun uh man puppies are super fun but uh <laughs> the other side of it is you you get up late some days because they they like to keep you up so Hopefully that training phase goes quick, Rachel, and you can get uh, plenty of sleep over the next couple months. And uh, and the the puppy behaves, the puppy uh, treats you right. But espresso, yeah, that is kind of the the cornerstone of uh, the coffee shops in in what uh, what we refer to them here in the U.S. Most of my listeners are here in the U.S. 
but yeah, the base to a lot of drinks, and then you can also get it, um, get it on its own, and it's uh, like a rock little rocket shot of coffee. Um, let's move on. F, we got to F already. Flat white, flat white. I talked about the other day on the Coffee World Tour, uh, Australian Kiwi or uh, uh, New Zealand specialty uh, over in that region. Uh, espresso based drink with um, a small amount of frothy milk in it really velvety frothy milk and it's just a regional a regional drink that they use and named i think it's very similar to a latte uh when we described it in the coffee world tour but i have never personally had one and uh, i've heard of it more than once i had heard of it back before i did the coffee world tour was reminded of it then and now see it here on this vocabulary list so um uh, <laughs> Rewild there, loves this. she says she loves a latte with heavy cream. Can't spell it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those those damn Italian words. Those damn Italian words. Flat white though. Flat white. If you're down under, if you're literally down under and looking for a, a good cup of coffee, try one of those flat whites. It is the way to go when in that region. Green beans. Green beans are not out in the garden. I mean, they are, but for the for this. This discussion, we're talking green beans. We're talking um, the end of that process. Uh, I went through about harvesting, um, milling, drying the the cherries that come off the coffee plant and getting that seed out. Um, once that seed is out and ready to store, it would be considered a green bean. And then it is sent off to a roaster to be roasted into what we get in the store. But that intermediary stage, that stage where they are are uh, are perfect for storing long term, uh, pretty much indefinitely, from what I understand, they are called green beans. Are they green? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> oh man, mm, man, mm, man. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Okay. All right. Um, earlier up here in the comments, I kind of just, uh, I just kind of skipped over it, but Backwoods mentioned something about the fact that he, we're joining him for a pig slaughter. And um, right now he comments and says that uh, it's not fair that we're doing a vocabulary episode when he is covered in pig blood and can't comment. So literally it sounds like uh, we are, in the ears of the backwood butcher while he is uh, he's doing some pig work. So interesting, interesting girl, interesting. Uh, Pip, Pip says, um, "Fat bottom girls is stuck in my head now." You're you're all right. You're all right. Um, geez, comments are interesting this morning for sure. Uh, where were we? Green beans, green beans. Uh, Y'all know what green beans are if you listen to this show. I talk about them quite a bit with. Uh, with the, the green beans that Brian pulls in over at Food Forest Farms. And uh, yeah, we've talked about them a couple ep episodes back on the coffee shows. Let's see, Hopper. Hopper's on the list. Um, what does that have to do with coffee? Usually it is the part of a, a coffee grinder that holds the beans. Uh, you walk into, hey man, really any gas station now that has the fresh, the fresh ground coffee. If you've seen that, um, a lot of gas stations have gone to uh, grind. Um, <laughs> Loco, it was flat. My word was flat. <laughs> Pip is thinking about fat bottom girls. And man, I think fat bottom girls probably roll better than the, the flat bottom girls. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but the hopper hopper is, uh, the bin on the top where you see the whole beans, where you, um, where you load them into a coffee grinder, you go into a coffee shop, they have the grinder, uh, next to the espresso machines, usually have a big cone on top full of, uh, lovely looking whole bean coffee. And that is basically where it is held until it, it grinds. Hunter says a hopper that thing I butchered yesterday. Oh, you got some rabbits done. Uh, how are they going? They uh, they getting easier one by one. I imagine that's how we always uh, felt. The first one was tough. 
they got easier and easier and easier. And then, uh, man, one will throw you for the loop in the middle at some point. But uh, back to uh, coffee hoppers, not uh, rabbit hoppers. But that hopper is the, the main storage compartment for those whole beans in the grinder, typically, typically for these purposes. Um, man, that's H I, uh, I didn't know where they were going to come up with an I, uh, but man, they tossed out Irish coffee on this list for I coffee related. I words, Irish coffee. <laughs> anyway, what is Irish coffee? <laughs> this definition says, uh, Irish coffee is uh, normal coffee's fun cousin. <laughs> it's made by adding whiskey, sugar, and cream to the coffee. Yeah, man, that that usually makes your cousin a lot more fun when you uh, load them up with whiskey and sugar. But Irish coffee, we talked about that uh, on the Coffee World Tour and not invented by the Irish, but invented by American tourists to Ireland to keep them warm. Um, <laughs> Rewild her life says she might need this, <laughs> need that this morning. Irish coffee? Or a hopper full of beans. <laughs> oh, Mike says no iced coffee. Um, that might be on the second list. I did two back-to-back -back lists. Uh, just so I knew I had plenty and plenty of terms. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, Irish coffee. Not invented by the Irish, only in Ireland. I think they had all the needed ingredients and some... Uh, some uh, <laughs> hungover American decided that they were going to put them all together. <laughs> and Rachel says she needs both this morning. She needs a hopper full of whole beans and a bottle of whiskey to make all of it into Irish coffee. <laughs> um, Loco, uh, Mike Philippine Nomad says the 7-Eleven's fresh not has some nasty hoppers don't drink anything from those self-serve big gulp slurpees coffee machines yeah um word of warning if you look around at a gas station and you look at the employees and you wouldn't let them clean your coffee maker at home assume that they're not cleaning the coffee maker at the gas station or the big gulp machine or the fountain soda machine uh if you've ever watched those expose um, like, um, let's examine how dirty the hotel room is and stuff. If you get into any of the episodes of, um, gas stations or convenience stores or grocery stores, things like that, that have the self-serve soda machines and that type of, uh, equipment. <sighs> yeah, it's, a uh, it hurts. It really, it really puts a damper on when you're, uh, when you're, getting products at the gas station. So thanks, Mike, for that reminder. <laughs> no, no fountain soda for me anytime soon. And then I'll forget and be reminded again and kind of feel sick to my stomach. So there is that. Let's move on from Irish coffee. Um, Jay Java, pretty no brainer for uh, pretty no brainer for coffee. That's just another nickname from coffee. And it originated from the from the Indonesian island of Java where coffee was coming from so it makes sense it makes sense that it would be the right term and uh it um it's uh yeah generic generic nickname for coffee and uh, hunter said that he thought that uh he thought the 7-eleven was pretty good remember or uh, better than the qt or the racetrack yeah i mean it all depends on the franchise. They're all franchised anymore. So it all depends on the franchise owner and how much they give a shit right down to the manager and the actual employee, man. You can you can polish a turd on the outside, but in the inside, you're always going to find shit and peanuts. So when you clean the outside of the slurpee machine, it's great. But then you open up like the nozzles. You open up the whole, uh, the hoses, the connectors, the internals of the machine and uh it's a different story i mean you can you can spit polish pretty much anything so um pip was wondering about wawa's and they have half decent coffee and food wawa was the the topic of many conversations in our tech groups uh when i was doing fuel tech stuff um wawa east coast 
mainly, and I think uh, mid-Atlantic East Coast at that, uh, mid-Atlantic to south. I don't know if they're up into the northeast anymore, but uh, everybody, all the techs were always raving about Wawa and their uh, breakfast sandwiches, and I believe they're like made to order. I, I have never been to one. I've seen many of them on uh, on the tech groups, but never been in one. But I believe they said that the stuff is made to order in the morning. Um, <laughs> they got Wawa Dam over in the Philippines. <laughs> Mike says I don't think that's a gas station. Uh, anyway, Java Java was um was the the nickname for coffee, and man, talk about uh, I think that that was a weird lead in. We were talking about uh, polishing a turd, but you cut it open. It's still uh, peanuts and shit. Uh, and let's move on to K, where we have, look at that, Kopi Luwak. Uh, Kopi Luwak is one of the most expensive coffees in the world. And if you don't know anything about it and you're confused why I was talking about peanuts and poo before I talked about Kopi Luwak, uh, what that is is coffee beans that have been eaten by a civet if you don't know what that is, it's a jungle cat, a small jungle cat, um, goes up into the trees, eats the coffee beans, and then poos them out. It is then collected and and processed and brewed. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's Kopi Luwak, and it's it's uh, interesting that we rolled into it with uh, <laughs> uh, Kopi Luwak. Um, Loco is spelled K-O-P-I space capital L-U-W-A-K. Poo coffee. Poo coffee. K-Bong says Wawa's from uh, Media PA and it's a family-owned flavor. <coughs> Hunter was wondering how much flavors change with a dirty coffee machine versus clean. Um Man, I notice even in my own cup that uh, older coffee, like if I go a couple days without like wiping out, um, a lot of times I'll just rinse the grounds out of my, my stainless steel French press, but it will get some of that um, really fine. When I hand grind my coffee, you get a really fine residue that'll kind of stay on the inside of the inside of the French press. And uh, if I go a day, it's not bad. But if I get to two days and it's like in this pour spout, uh, you get the same thing like in the in a uh, in the bottom of your mug. If I don't happen to rinse out the bottom of the mug before I pour the first cup of coffee in, it has a little extra bitter taste. I think that powdery ground uh, accumulates and adds to a bitter taste. So you can imagine in a coffee machine in a gas station that accumulates, 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 accumulates. Um, not only one, it, it, it's a, got some place for stuff, the, the creepy call it crawlies to grow. Uh, but I think the heat's going to kill it, but that still changes flavor. I think that residue really brings a bitterness to the coffee. Um, we were always very adamant about cleaning the espresso machine at uh, at the coffee shop I worked at because we felt that uh, man clean clean is one but uh, man I really felt like it changed the taste of that of that espresso coming out so um loco says he knows the variety uh, it's way overrated personally don't waste your money on the poo coffee um he says they bought some from a local farmer once when they went hiking in southern Southern uh, Tagalog region, he charged double the price from the regular. And did it taste like shit? Did it taste like shit? That's all I was wondering. Um, move on. Kopi Luwak is uh, latte art. You can imagine what latte art is. Or maybe you can't. Uh, it's not the the art of pouring a latte, but it is the par art uh, or the, the art of making art while you pour a latte you see pictures of them on instagram you see them across commercials and um and all over social media but some baristas when pouring a latte when you get to the top and there is that that frothy uh thicker milk that kind of uh will it's stiffer you can pour 
the the coffee so that you can get the browns and shades of white to brown and draw pictures in the top of the latte. Usually start with a, a heart or a smiley face, things like that. But I have seen um, seen some pretty, pretty skilled people that will pour a beautiful piece of art with just pouring out of the pitcher into the cup. And then they'll take a, a coffee stir and and uh, finish the work. And yeah, it, it's so sad to see somebody take that extreme, extreme amount of time and effort and skill to do that. And the person is just so wrapped up in their own head that when they set it on the on the counter and call their name, they walk up, they get handed the lid instead of it being on the top. And instead of looking, they just plop that lid on and blast that uh, blast that piece of art to uh, oblivion. I guess they weren't there for the show. They were there for the Joe. Wow, that was bad. That was bad, guys. I apologize. Uh, but coffee, uh, latte art, latte art is definitely a thing. Um, uh, <laughs> Tip says he thought we weren't supposed to play with our food. Um, well, I mean, chefs are routinely uh, trying to make their food into art, and so why not the uh, why not the coffee guy? Loco says that Kopi Luak uh, tasted <laughs> tasted shit nasty, like almost every other cup served around town. It just tastes old and burnt. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to this list. This is interesting list. Um, here, I'm gonna finish uh, finish up my uh, my French press here. Uh, what's next? Latte art down to uh, mocha pot. Mocha pot is a stovetop coffee maker that brews coffee by passing boiling water pressured by steam through ground coffee. That sounds a lot like percolator to me. I think that's how a percolator works. I could be wrong never actually used a, a, a traditional um, old school percolator, but uh, the definition sounds like what I'm picturing uh, when I saw it on grandma's counter. So I believe uh, Mocha Pot is uh, just a, a brand name of that percolator. So we will go with that. Move on to, uh, and we got Nitro Coffee. Nitro Coffee is, uh, is a newer thing but it's a cult, not newer as in like recent, like newer as in not traditional coffee, but it's a, a cold brew coffee. And then they infuse it with nitrogen gas, just like tap beer. And, um, and it, it, it's poured smooth. You can get it in can, you can get it on tap. I've, uh, places have it on tap and it comes out like a smooth, creamy, uh, Guinness, like, uh, Guinness, traditionally when it is um it is tapped properly uh run properly uses a nitrogen mix in the in the driving in the driving gas for the tap system and that gives it that that thicker velvety head and um cascading effect is even better that you see in those guinness but a nitro coffee does similar um could probably pass them for each other in a glass if you didn't know which was which so um see somebody here um hunter said there were two kegs that one job ahead yeah it's it's some interesting stuff and uh let's see so nitro coffee um uh, loco says the mocha pot the mocha pots are still popular over in the philippines they're cheaper than a french press okay is that like hey mike is that a uh, very similar um similar to uh percolator is that the same same uh, same theory did they just change the name i don't know i don't know never used one um over extraction we got to oh we're going to do over extraction this is when your coffee brew your coffee grounds are brewed too long so when we talked about french press we set a timer for four minutes once we start the water we pour the water in it um it starts to brew. We got four minutes in the French press. You got um, you you uh, you adjust your grind uh, size uh, to for a pour over, and uh, make sure that that pour over that water only sits in the coffee for the right amount of time, uh, depending on your your preference of flavor. But 
over extraction is when it goes beyond that, when it goes beyond your taste. Uh, and this results in super bitter uh, coffee. The longer the water sits in contact with the grounds, the more bitterness comes out of that coffee. So if you like it that way, you like it that way. Um, over extracting coffee is, uh, made, man, it's basically like cooking a well done steak. Some people like it, but, you know, some people drink Kopi Luwak too. So if you get what I mean there. Over extraction is uh, is not what you want to do. <laughs> um, he says yes, they are a smaller version of a modified percolator, the the mocha pot. So, um, K Bonk was wondering if they're made of clay. <laughs> Hunter says he's really, really crap at making coffee. Maybe that's why you don't appreciate it as much. Though I mean, there is that. There, there is something to be said for that, Hunter. Um, you know, uh, we don't know what we don't know. And if you grew up and what was in your house was Folgers in a in a coffee pot that was never cleaned out. Uh, maybe you started drinking coffee at your job and in the break room and you could stand a stand a fork up in it. And that's just what you're accustomed to. And you're like, man, coffee is what it is. It just kind of sucks. Man, imagine if this is a little little analogy for you. Um, hmm. I don't want to go down that road. That was that that wouldn't have been good. <laughs> imagine if uh, imagine if you grew up your whole life and you had hamburgers at school in your school lunchroom. Um, if you're coming to SRF, ask me what my other analogy for uh, for experiencing good coffee is. I don't think it's a public experience. It is not a public analogy. Um, anyway, you have um, you have hamburger at school, and you know the ones you get from Cisco, the bulk frozen patties. Um, the girl in the in the kitchen didn't give two flying shits about uh, man, just cooked the hell out of them, almost like to the fact that they're the consistency of a of a, so a, a shoe sole. You eat those for 12 years, you're in school, you get out, you go to college, you're you're in the cafeteria college, that's what you eat. Um, that's what you know, that's what a hamburger is. Then you're uh, experiencing life and you know you you want to um, you want to get out on the town, you you got a girl, you're gonna go on a date and you go to some fancy restaurant and you're like, I like a hamburger. Holy crap, look at the price. How are they how are they charging that price for a hamburger? And you uh, you think back to all those hamburgers you had in, in high school, through college, in all the crappy cafeterias all the way through. And you're like, well, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. I'm trying to impress this girl. I'm going to get this $30 hamburger. And it comes out and it's one of those that's, you know, like an inch and a half thick, perfectly cooked, um, maybe a piece of cheese on it, some like hand thick cut smoked bacon on top. A uh, beautiful bun, not just that crappy smashed white bread bun that they pulled out of the, the cafeteria, half stale, maybe moldy. This is a nice handcrafted bun. And you sit it down and you look at it and you're like, that's not a hamburger. That's not a hamburger. And uh, so here you are, you take a bite into it and it's the most wonderful thing you've ever had in your life. And you're like, I liked hamburgers before. They were okay. But holy shit. Holy shit. That's kind of how I looked at my coffee journey. Um, my, my hamburger was coffee. I grew up, started messing around with it with dad, you know, in the morning. Uh, went on to college and you got what you got out of the big carafe anywhere you could find it because you were super tired and it didn't really matter. Wasn't a Starbucks on every corner at that point. Um, got some blue collar jobs. And man, when I talk about being able to stand the spoon up in the coffee, that's what I drank, man. It was the shit that, um, man, you got to break at 930 and the shit was made at like five in the morning. It just sat there and cooked 
the last of it, but you wanted that cup of coffee to stay up until lunch break. Um, and so you drank it and you, you had the heartburn and the gut rot. And you're like, man, the only reason I drink this shit is to stay awake. And then I got a job at a coffee shop. And then I started learning about coffee and it got better. It got way better. It was 110% better than uh, what I was drinking. And I was like, holy crap, it opened my eyes. And I was happy and I thought I knew a lot about coffee and I thought I could enjoy it. And I really um, gravitated towards better stuff, but I still kind of dabbled in that gas station, that gas station swill. And eventually at, at some point I met Brian from Food Forest Farms and discovered air roasted coffee. I discovered hand small batch air roasted coffee with someone that gave a shit about the coffee, gave a shit about the customer. Uh, it wasn't about just getting it all mass produced and getting it off to a customer. And it changed my it changed my perspective on what it was and what it was supposed to taste like, what it could taste like. I guess not what it's supposed to taste like. It's supposed to taste like whatever you enjoy the most, but what it could taste like how good it could taste and how well it could sit in my stomach without turning it in knots or make me burp up acid water. So that's kind of the, that's kind of what I'm looking at when I hear, um, when I hear Hunter saying that's maybe why he doesn't appreciate it as much is because he, he doesn't really, he hasn't really enjoyed it just because he hasn't, you don't know what you don't know. Um, Backwood says, if I could change, you could change. We can all change. <laughs> um, K-Bonk talking Pyrex corning wear percolator. I was actually, hey, K-Bonk, do, um, do you ever use corning glass as a, a reference point to where you were in Western New York? We were talking about corning incorporated this weekend. Um Loco says he really started learning the ABCs all about coffee. I like it, man. Uh, after my coffee routine video. Yeah, I got a video out on YouTube where I just took uh, five minutes and rolled through what I do to make coffee in the morning. Basically weigh it out in the hand grinder, uh, heat up that water in a teapot while I'm while I'm spinning that grinder. It takes a couple minutes, so it's fresh ground uh, to the right size that I choose. Dump it in a French press four minutes later, uh, press that down, and and I got 32 ounces of fantastic coffee. So thanks for watching that video, Mike. I know uh, I know a lot of people have gone, it's that easy to have good coffee? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, burger, poor man, Salisbury steak, or vice versa. Correct, correct. Uh, growing up, all my relatives had Folgers crystals. Oh, the Folgers crystals. Gotta love that instant coffee. Gotta love that instant coffee. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where was I here? Nitro coffee over extraction. Yep, over extraction was where it was at. Um, we're talking about getting into that premium coffee. Let's hit the pour over. Pour over is another brewing method. I, I was talking there where you can adjust the grind size to a, to uh, account for how fast you want it to come through the um come through the cone basically it looks like a beaker a um a beaker from or uh would that be an erlenmeyer flask i don't know i don't remember all the glassware in chemistry class but basically a pour over is a carafe in the bottom and it necks down in the middle and then it cones out and you get a cone filter to go down in that top you pour your coffee in there you slowly pour water over it and the water filters down through the coffee almost like your drip brew coffee machine but there's no there's no manual uh, process in this. Well, the way you can control how long your coffee seeps in, in the grounds is how big the grinds are. If you do a very coarse ground, so bigger chunks of coffee, um, it sits in there and it's like, uh, so if you picture rocks, if you got a bunch of bigger pebbles and they're sitting in a jar, you can see all the spaces in between them and you pour water and it filters down through very quickly. Um, if you take sand and pack it into the same thing and you pour the water into it, it percolates way slower. So you can control the amount of, of extraction of the coffee grounds from the water uh, with how coarse you grind the coffee. You like it less bitter. You like it a little less strong, a little less potent. 
you're going to grind those grinds bigger. It's going to extract less. It's going to drop through there and take less of that flavor as it goes through. If you want it to sit and really seep and get that more bitter, stronger, uh, fuller taste um, and extract different flavors from the coffee, you're going to grind it a lot finer, pack it in, and then it's going to sit and seep through there. And the longer it sits, the more it extracts. So that's a pour over uh, lesson for you real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, K-Bonk says um, the, those crystals are still way better than the nasty Nestle instant coffee powder. Nio the cone. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and pour over is the number two method after a French press for Mike. Yes. Yes. Uh, rewilder life says I'd be so riddled with anxiety. If I drank caffeine like that, I have a hard time finding quality decaf. The place I get, got it here changed owners. Um, talk to Brian, Rachel, uh, talk about, talk to Brian about Swiss water decaf that he has. Um, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm going to mark that down. I'm going to talk to you about that. Cause if you want some decaf coffee, that's, that's really good. And you're really going to enjoy it. Um, man, I couldn't really tell the difference between regular and decaf on Brian's side. So we talked, talk to you about it for sure. Um, K bong says a double filter is another way to slow down the pour over. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. If you want that, uh, that coarser grind and you want it to slow down that double filter will stop that water back up in the grinds and extract a little bit more. So, um, anyway, I am not going to hit the end of this list. I'm going to keep this list, uh, maybe for the next coffee episode. I think, uh, I think next week, this is kind of fun. I enjoy hitting these terms and, and seeing where the conversation goes with it. Um, I'm going to mark here where I got to pour over um, before I forget. And uh, yeah, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the definitions um, and the little chat about coffee. I enjoyed uh, having you guys here and, and weighing in in the comments. If you uh, if you want to keep doing that, that is fantastic. I really like the morning crew. Tim and I were talking a lot about content creation this weekend uh, while we were working out on the property. And um, I, I, I really talked to him a lot about the fact that I think I, I, I picked a hard road to hoe, a hard road to hoe here uh, by doing the morning show. Uh, the morning show was uh, by necessity uh, at the beginning. And man, I, I kind of rolled with it and I really enjoy it. It kind of, um, mm, <laughs> in an international audience, Kayvon says, especially with an international audience. Well, yeah, and that's kind of how it's developed. But man, I appreciate everybody that hangs out in the morning and, and listens to the morning show, has their coffee with me and weighs in and enjoys it. Um, I know some, some rely on this to get up and, and get going in the morning, Kyle. Um, so when he actually shows up on time, I know that he, he listened to his alarm and got out of bed, but I appreciate all of you guys coming and hanging out in the morning and, uh, man, what a great, what a great audience, of of lives that we have come in in the morning and, uh, and solid, solid contributions. And I appreciate all of you every day that you show up. So thank you. Thank you. It's, it's been a great Monday. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking uh, DIY RV maintenance, things that you can do for your RV. And a lot of the stuff that uh, everybody runs off and has to wait months or weeks for appointments at the, the RV shop right now uh, can be done at home, uh, especially winterization of your RV, things like that. So I got a list. I'm going to pound through things, uh, things to look at, things to think about doing uh DIY on your RV instead of waiting in line at that shop. So should be good. Another good interview, in, uh, good episode. And uh, I think it'd be good information for even if you don't own an RV. So I look forward to doing that. Um, guys, other than that, if you, uh, if you're listening on the audio and you would like to participate in the live comments, you can always join the live recording Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Central on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. And if you enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with others. You can find a post about the episode along with links to all my social media posts, services I offer, recommended products, and companies that I'm affiliated with at the Watts 
Project.com. Be sure to listen on one of your favorite podcast 2.0 value for value podcast players like Podverse or Fountain.fm. Make it a great day, guys. We will uh, we will circle back with you on Tuesday for another episode of the Lots Project podcast where we're talking DIY RV maintenance. Make it a fantastic day and we will catch up with you tomorrow.